Well, well, what has the cat dragged in today? It's another video on the stealth game. Now, in this video, we're going to actually take a look at creating content and what we need to do to be able to create said content. Now, I don't want to mess with my test scene. Now, if I want to go in and add in a feature or when I move everything over to an actual level with multiple enemies and I discover a bug, I'm still going to want to have this test scene here for easy testing of new features and any found bugs. So I want to leave this scene alone. Plus, you know, who knows? Maybe I want to make several different levels. Wouldn't be that much work to modify the victory conditions to automatically take you to a new level after a short amount of time or via button push or however you wanted to manage it. So I need to try to figure out how to get this level and the objects in it configured correctly so that I can take that information to other levels. And the key to that is going to be creating a bunch of prefabs. Now, there's a lot of prefabs in here already, but they're the original prefabs, so to speak. When we dragged in the two Cinti Studio characters and the chicken, those were prefabs that we were dragging into the scene. So they're showing as prefabs, but they're still sort of linked back to their original prefabs. I don't want that. I want my own original prefabs set up in the prefabs folder here. Now, I'm paranoid because I've been programming for far too long. So I don't want to just drag these game objects down into my prefabs folder here and let Unity handle the creation automatically. I want to forcibly break their previous prefab links and then create them as prefabs because I don't want to take any chance that they'll have old links to the previous prefabs. So what I'm going to do, I'll start with the Toon Chicken. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to the prefab option and I'm going to tell it to unpack completely. What this does is it breaks all prefab links through all children of the game object. Now I can drag, oops, also I want to rename this too to goal. almost forgot that part. Now I'm going to drag this down into my prefabs folder. And now I have my goal set up. I'm going to do the same thing for enemy. Right click, prefab, unpack completely, drag it down, create a new prefab, player, right click, prefab, unpack completely, create my prefab. There we go. Now, the canvases and the game logic. I don't necessarily, I don't really need a prefab for the victory canvas, a prefab for the lost canvas, and a prefab for the game logic. They're kind of all bundled together, if I'm to be quite honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the lost canvas and the victory canvas both children of game logic. I'm also going to grab the event system and make it a child of game logic because the event system, if I was to put buttons into these canvases, I still need to have the event system. So I want the event system to come along for the ride. And then after putting all of those game objects into my game logic, as children of my game logic, I will create a prefab of game logic. So now all I have to do when creating a new level is to toss in the game logic goal and player prefabs and then the enemy prefabs as necessary. There's not really any point in me creating a prefab out of this level collection here because every level is going to be so different in terms of the pieces that it uses potentially that there's no need for me to do that. The same thing for the directional light. I don't need to make a prefab out of the directional light because I haven't changed anything about it. And I'll get one of those automatically when I create a new scene. So I'm going to save my test scene. And then I'm going to do a control N for new scene. And I'm going to tell it to give me a basic built-in scene. Now, 
All right. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to recreate my level game object. So underscore level, and I'm going to reset this back to the origin. And I'm then, then I'm going to drop in my game logic because game logic doesn't really depend on any geometry being present. And before I get too much further carried away, I am going to save this scene. So I'm going to save this out as level one in my scenes folder, of course. Now I'm going to do what we did back at the beginning, and I'm going to go into the Polygon Starter Package and go into Prefabs, and I'm just going to start building a level. Um, so I'm going to come back down here to the buildings, the 5x5 five five floor, and I am going to start building stuff out. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately mark these guys as static and then drop them into my level object. So that way, as I duplicate stuff out, everything's already nice and set up. Now, I am doing a very specific layout here because, honestly, I've, I've done this particular layout so many times in practice and very other, various other trial runs that I can pretty much do this um, without really needing to pay too close attention to what I am doing. Don't copy my level verbatim. Use some creativity. Try to figure out what kind of a layout do you want. Uh, there are some things to consider, however. Where there's we have no code in place for handling the player falling off the edge of the world. So we want to ensure that the player does not, in fact, fall off the edge of the world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these blocks here, plonk it down, snap it to the grid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scale on this block to 5 so that it perfectly lines up with, um, ah, and no, actually, let's, let's change, okay, my world, so from over there, I was confused, I was like, wait a minute, why is this not snapping correctly? It's because my world grid size is set to 2.5, and this doesn't have half units. Uh, so actually, I'm going to set my world grid size to 1 and re-snap it. And there we go. Now this little wall piece perfectly fits along. Go ahead and mark that static. Mark my first one as static. Uh, toss these back into my level collection. And now with this little wall here, you know, the player can't walk off. And I'm just going to use these walls to go through. It's like, okay, well, now I need the X scale to be 4 and this to be 1. Whoops, and I should have duplicated that. Control-Z, duplicate. Why 4? Because, well, it's already sitting. Now that's taking up one of its units. And duplicate it out. Of course, now it needs to be back to 5, so I'll change that to 5. Five, there we go. Oops, control D. And I'm just going to go through and build out this, this very simple little layout here. So, like I was saying, you know, don't copy this exactly. You know, try to think like how exactly. Oops, let's just, I already got a four here, so let me duplicate that out. How exactly do I want this? to be laid out you know what type of pieces do i want to have um and this one's going to actually need to be a six because it needs to jut out like that same thing for this piece over here uh, 
you know, what kind of layout do I want to have? You know, where do I want to place the enemies? Um, oops, I want you to be a four there. So on and so forth. And you can see I'm just forming a very simple little box here. And actually, since there probably isn't too much more benefit in seeing me finish this out, I am going to go ahead and pause the recording and I'll jump back in once I actually have the remainder of my pieces put down. And I'm back. So you can, as you can see, it's a very basic layout. Um, I'm going to take a moment to check to make sure that uh, I have everything. So I'm going to disable the level. Yep, okay, everything disappeared. And because I'm paranoid, this is why I left the level unchecked on static. I'm going to check static and I'm going to tell it, yes, change all children. All the children should have been static anyways. Never hurts to be paranoid. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to navigation, which should be open from previous videos. If it's not, remember, window, AI, navigation. And I am going to go to the bake tab, and I'm going to bake my nav mesh. And if everything is set to static, which mine is, you can see that I have a nav mesh built just fine. Okay, so that's the level set up. Uh, next, I'm going to put the player into here. I'm going to put the player over here. Now, the player already has a camera, so I'm going to get rid of this main camera that came with my scene by default. I'm going to go into my prefabs folder, and I'm going to plonk down the player. And I do want to make sure that the player is facing a sensible direction. So I will turn the player so that they're facing down the maze or into the level rather than that wall. I'm going to put my chicken over here in this little corner. And then I'm going to plonk down a couple of enemies. You know, you want to think about, oops, nope, that's not the right angle. Now you want to think about placement, uh, Uh, you want to think about placement, you know, I don't, you know, obviously I wouldn't want to do something like this. I mean, that, that just wouldn't be fun for the player, right? Um, I say maybe put one over here, start his rotation like that, uh, put one over here, put that rotation like that. Um, and you know what? I'll just get rid of this one. And so yeah, let's just think about guard placements. What does the player have to do? Um, you know, maybe it would actually be sensible if I put like a little alcove right here for another guard to sit. Now, think about it, try to think about it in terms of how much fun is the player going to have to navigate through this. And then you're going to want to test it. You're going to want to hit that play button and see, okay, how hard or how easy is this to navigate through? It's like, okay, I can use that to hide. And that's like, yeah, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot straight through here. This seems a little bit easy. And so maybe I want to put additional guards in here. Maybe I'll duplicate this guy. And maybe I'll have this guard rotate the other direction. How can you do that? Yeah, well, he rotates at negative 90 degrees per second. And there we go. That'll at least hopefully make things slightly more interesting over here. Still fairly easy to navigate through. But this is where playtesting and repetition comes into effect. You know, oh, and I also want to make sure I've verified that I can win. I still want to verify that I can die properly. Always, always, always check all of your conditions. 
Okay, excellent. I can still lose. So think about it. Plan it out. Try to make an interesting level. This is not an interesting level. This is a demonstration level. So see if you can make it a bit more interesting. Now, there is going to be one additional bonus video where I take pretty much the exact identical code and I pretty it up a little bit to show it's like, you know, a little bit of imagination and a tiny little bit of extra work. How much more interesting can we make this? But until then, that concludes the stealth game tutorial video sequence. If you enjoyed this tutorial, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you didn't find it particularly useful, a thumbs down and preferably a comment to go along with it to let me know what I can do better in the future. Until the next tutorial sequence.